Ooh, what is up, Scrub fam? I am back with another deck profile with a format that's continuing to evolve, and we're looking at taking the next steps in the evolution of that format. Before I get started into this deck profile, and this hot take, I want to give a shout out to my sponsor, Beard Collectibles, Alec Pastrana, best shop owner on the planet. If you're looking to get your sealed product, always go through Beard Collectibles. Alec Pastrana is going to give you the best customer service experience that there is in the game, and you're always going to be happy with your product that you get from them. And of course, you have to get your ultimate box, because you know there's some really sweet cards in there that are pretty messed up that I'm already brewing with, and I'll be doing deck profiles on that here soon, as soon as we get past Gen Con and stuff. But anyways, I wanted to give you guys a look into testing so far from decks that I've been playing and decks I've been brewing. And this is one of the decks that I really like right now in this format. This is Blue Yellow SS3. So again, we're taking a lot of the same principles that we've picked up from the mid-range and control decks, and we're trying to take some of that and then put it into a deck that can kind of compete on the current axes that we're looking to play on, which right now you have to look at Flute Aggro as being one of the levels you have to look at blue control being a level you have to look at blue green being another level added to the layers of this format and you have to find a deck that can compete with all those things and at the same time play a game that's good enough to you know come back from chain zeno and all those different things and be able to put pressure on the opponent like when that's one thing with these ss3 decks is you have some that are like really controlling but the thing is is the really controlling ones lose to the ones that are able to get underneath them and so this deck kind of needs to be able to play both roles so have a really good late game but at the same time have a really good mid game and so that's what this yellow version of the deck does and plus we have some ways to stifle the opponent and disrupt them to make ourselves just even better than most people are. So first thing I want to do is I want to go over the blue cards. We're playing four Legendary Flute, four Sinsu Bean. We're playing four Raging Spirit Sun Gohan. This is, again, he carries the whole team on his back, though. Four Boost Attack Piccolo, of course. We're playing two, two split of Energy Boost Beerus and Beerus Universe 7 Vanquisher. Main reason why is because I wanted more main deck removal that wasn't black. So I could play a better black card in its in its place. That's just been the absolute stones in testing so far. I had to do it in order to fix the blue-green build because I was tired of playing red cards and flipping them face up off the flip and not being able to tap you on on time. And so I made that concession and was able to play Trunks Power over Seeing Time instead. So I really wanted to add a more main deck removal. And then Vanquisher Beerus is still just a card that can be a finisher, but at the same time just really swings advantage in your favor once he comes down and gets the swing. Then we have three Dragon Fist SS3 Goku. This is the top of your curve. He's going to be what comes down and tries to win you the game. What's really sweet is when you pair him, he swings, you bounce one of your cards, punish cards back to their hand, and then you can power over seeing time in the same exact turn. So you're going to go get to search your discard pile for, I mean, search your warp for any card, put it in your hand, and then you'll be able to combo with it whenever you need to swing for a game. So I really like that kind of wombo combo. But in general, Dragon Fist is just great in this format, especially with the blue-green decks that just put out their barrier guys, their enchantments, and then you just can't really mess with them. And then, of course, it's just really great for just tempo swing and clearing a board or playing against apes. So overall, just a really good catch-all. The We play four Unbreakables because you're just going to play, you know, eight super combos. It There's no reason not to. And the thing is I like about blue yellow is that the energy is really easy because you only need one yellow so you can hit your source of power on turn two. Otherwise, you're going to be flipping blue or yellow cards more often than not. The games where I do hit a red card, it doesn't really bother me that much. We play four Crusher Balls. Four Crusher Balls, great. You should play four Crusher Balls. If you haven't tested with Crusher Ball in this format yet, you should probably do it. I hate giving out this information, but at the same time, I understand that I'm a content provider first, competitive player second, but Crusher Ball is the stones in this metagame, so be prepared for it and you should play with and against it for master roshi forged will so master roshi forged will i really love the interaction of negate with forged will and then flute it back to hand draw a card and then so you have a master roshi for the next turn so you can kind of just keep deploying it keep playing it so this is something that if you need to ever just kind of stall the opponent out a bit stall aggro out a bit you can just keep fluting roshis back to your hand over and over and over again so it's always really effective we play two nimbus ninny deck uh, I really like Nimbus in the main, but I don't like playing three to four copies. I really only want it when I want it, or I need it when I need it. I never need to see it more than one to two times per game in order to keep myself from living. So I'm playing two Nimbus in the main. The rest will be sided in the sideboard that's going to be completed at a later date, closer to Jin Khan when I'm trying to figure out what deck I'm playing. Four Source of Power, Sun Goku. This is your Awakening card. This is a tournament pack card that no one's talking about. But again, it's like a Digging Deep Vegeta that's way easier to cast. You're just going to be able to just play this, swing, take two life untap it so now it's a 20k awaken your leader and then go from there we're playing three power charge bardock so essentially bcc gohan but yellow easier to cast you only cost one yellow to play this card is absolutely insane whether if it's in the early game mid game or late game it provides exactly what you need at all times and then the tech of the format no one's really talking about mecha freeze of the returning terror 
this card is just gonna it's gonna get some people they're gonna try and you're gonna so one thing you're gonna want to do with this deck is you're gonna want to swing like once you start getting your own Go gohans on board swing with your leader at their leader combo whatever swing you know make them play gohan in rest mode make them play another gohan in rest mode and then windmill slam the mecha freeze of the returning terror because they're probably not playing around it drop a card from your hand and then you just kill both gohans on board so your opponent minus two themselves and they get no value out of it whatsoever aside from you know keeping that life but in general mecha freeze of the returning terror is great in this format i really like playing two copies in the main deck it pairs great with crusher ball as well Something you could also consider doing is if you wanted to play Explosive Spirits on Goku in this slot, you could too, if you wanted a 5k combo instead of the plus 10k. But I like Mecha Frieza also being a threat. If you have a Mecha Frieza and a Sensu Bean and you can make it 20k getting to swing twice, that's always really good to close out a game. But anyway, as you guys know, as the usual thing, actually before I do that, let me go over Trunks Power Receiving Time. So this card is nuts! We knew it before, we've always known it. It was great in Veggies, it was great in Mass Saiyan, but... In the Goku mirrors, the SS3 mirrors, the person who can see more of their cars more often usually wins. So being able to get your Unbreakable, being able to get your Raging Spirits on Gohan, being able to get a Master Roshi back, being able to get a Piccolo. Like, all these things are so impactful across the course of the game. So play, being able to see more of those cars is huge, and plus it's just two energy double striker comes down, he's impactful, and he's easy to get to. So you'll be able to play this twice a game, at least, right? And then... We, the two energy moves to Majin Buu, I know you guys are going to ask me why I'm playing that. Honestly, I don't want to play anything else in this slot. I'm debating it between this and one other card. And right now, what I really just like is I just like having the two cantrips in the deck. So if you ever have a turn where, like, say you're turn three, you play a three drop, and then you just have a one drop Boo, you just have access to it. And so you just have basically two extra copies of every other card in your deck if you really think about it, if you just start doing some math or like whatever the percentages are. But this may actually end up becoming a different card after some more testing. But otherwise, this is the list. As you guys know, there'd be a gameplay video to follow. It's a pretty interesting game. It's this deck against a interesting SS3 deck. But otherwise, it's pretty short, pretty simple. But I hope you guys enjoy, and I appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you guys so much for the support. I'll put a link for the Patreon down in the description. I just posted a decklist dump for my weekend of testing for Gen Con, which includes a decklist like this. It includes an updated blue-green list. It includes a, a blue-red list, and it includes a five-color control deck. All that were tested this weekend that all put up some pretty amazing results while I'm testing for Gen Con. So be sure to check out the Patreon. And again, thank you so much for all my patrons for choosing to support me in this. And that's why I continue to deliver this content to you guys because you guys deserve it you guys are the best community out there and i appreciate you all thank you guys so much and k bye see you in a few what is up square fam i'm here with the deck profile that was just posted this is the blue yellow ss3 we're going to be playing a game so you guys can see how it plays we're playing an ss3 mirror and so in this game what we're looking for is we're really looking for our card to awaken so we're looking for a source of power sun goku and when we're playing this deck, we want to really make sure we stay on colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold on to the Unbreakable, because that kind of stifles any sort of aggro the opponent might have. And then we mold them back our five, and we ended up getting our source of power. So what's really interesting is, depends on what configuration this person's playing, if they're not playing a bl blue heavy base, then we kind of get to blow them out with the Crusher Ball when they try and play either a source of power or digging deep. And so that's kind of... A sweet thing that we opened up with a crusher ball in our, our hand so our hand is actually pretty defensive with the perfect play so opponents playing double one drops on turn one this doesn't seem like a normal ss3 deck the flute is kind of interesting here on the Cronoa. so let's see all right so we're gonna pitch the mecha frieza nope we pitch a sensu bean and then charge. Okay, that was the right call, not pitching the mecha, because we ended up hitting the mecha in our energy. So that's actually going to pay off big for us. There's a source of power. We have the crusher ball ready. And get wrecked, my guy. Pass back to us. I think we're going to have to charge. Yep. Charge the six drop, play source of power. He can't respond to us, so we're going to kill his. That's the goal, at least. Take two, untap. Alright. That was a pretty good rip. 
sets up our next couple of turns. Swing lead. This will put him to five, which I'm fine with. So I'm not going to swing anymore because I wanted to force him to have a second copy of Source of Power to awaken. If he doesn't have it, then we're just going to go ahead and be way ahead on cards as well as advantage. So we're just going to hope that he does not have the second copy. I really wish that we had a Crusher Ball here, but we just used one and got a ton of value out of it. Yeah, it looks like he had it. Okay. That's fine. We're just going to combo Raging Spirit. Now he's going to be forced to attack at that. But we have plenty of cards to be able to protect it. Play Cronoa. Okay. Yep, there he goes. He's not comboing. Okay, we're just going to save it. The more we, the more threats we can keep on board, the more he's going to have to continue to combo. He's going to swing at the Gohan again. That's fine. I think we just combo. I don't think that a use can be in here just feels bad. But I really like having the second level. Yeah. Okay. We'll just chart. We'll do. We'll do source power. It's minus one, but it's fine. We're gonna pick up speed going into this turn, especially because of flute and Gohan. Can't play the Beerus anyway. Do we need a second yellow? Might be nice to add. Yeah, that's that seems like the right call right now, especially to make sure the Mecha Freezer returning tears online. Swing here. We want to force action here, especially because all of our energy is untapped. So anything we can get him to combo off the board with, we're happy. Yeah, he just knows because we have attackers on the board already. We get to aim at it. No combos. Let's pick up some advantage. Yep, he combos. So we clear his board a little bit. We'll flute back. Draw. What a draw. Yep, we're really moving now. Force pressure. Power of receiving time. This card's been really clutch in testing so far. It's just extra copies of everything. So we'll go ahead and grab an unbreakable. We'll go to 30, put pressure. So he's going to have to give us at least two cards here. Yep. Double boost. That's a good feeling. Two of those gone. And then now we get to have shields up on our turn. We get access to all of our energy on defense. I might want to be aggressive here with the three drop Goku. No. That's smart. Leave it up. Just in case. And plus, we're not going to take the life anyway. He's charging a multi mech Balma. What is this deck, my guy? He's going, wow, that's all four boost tech Piccolos. Mm, we're going to have to combo over. As you guys are being lulled by the sweet sounds of the Jackson. We have enough cards to combo, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna we're gonna invest. I hate doing it, but that's a good rip. And we'll send Sabine. Combo boo. And then we'll keep the Gohan back for defense again. So we're taking our life. We're only down a card on that exchange. So he's playing a Cronoa. Okay. I really am trying to figure out what his deck's end game is, but I think protecting my life just in general is a is the right idea. The only really time I really want to go down to three is if my opponent has already gone down to three. Check out realm. Check discard. Yeah, we don't. We're, I don't think we're going to be playing the beer same time soon. He hasn't established any threats on board. I know that he might have the Nimbus, but I just want to see the extra card anyway. 
Yeah, he went down to three. Okay, that means we now have permission to go down to three. We're now back at card parity, and we get another attack out of it. So he's going to have to combo things on board or cards from hand. Yep. That's a lot of value. So now we're going to end this turn up on cards. Okay. Yep. No responses? Man, we are really doing it. He's having to give us a lot of cards here. Because he's either negating and then getting rid of cards, or he's comboing, which is getting rid of more cards and then take, and then sacrificing two. Okay, so he gets rid of that for the auto, and then now he's got a combo. Well, we know what his end game is. He took the two. He goes to one. Okay. Yeah, we are we are more than aware of what his plan is now. Mira into FDC. Okay. Play time control. He's just flooding one drops. Yeah. His, his texture is just mono one drops. Swings at lead. Okay, it's. Uh, I think the Nimbus here is right. He's swinging with leader. We get to punish him for it. Yeah. No responses. Yeah, we'll get rid of source power. The crush ball might be more valuable. Because if he has a three drop here, it works. It doesn't work against the mirror, but it's fine. He's not gonna drop the mirror right now anyway. I'm still at three. He has to get me down to two. So until he does that, we're just gonna protect our life. Okay, we get to untap with a vanquisher in play. The only card in my hand that doesn't do anything. Yep. We're not going to go down to two. There's the Nimbus. Definitely not taking the life then. Swing lead. Negates again. Okay, that's fine. Swing with the beers. He Roshis, and he's going to sack six energy worth of things. Okay, so he's now down to six cards. We're up at seven. We could push here, but just... Just get something on board. I think just play the boo. We just know what he's going to try and do next turn, so I just think we just... Just leave our energy up so we have shields up this entire turn against him. Nothing crazy can happen. No shenanigans. We at least get to Crusher Ball one threat, or we can save the Crusher Ball for Nimbus. I'm bad. I forgot to untap my energy. Well, good thing I got five. There's another Bulma. Nimbus. Scar Crusher Ball. Because we know we can't. We can't. The deflect. Oh, he bad ranked. Okay. That's fine. I got all my energy up. All the one drops he's coming with. Okay, interesting. So he's just trying to push me to two? We're We're fine. If we just stop ourselves from going to two, we'll just win the game. Come with that, 45, and then we'll just come with the boo. And we still get to leave Crusher Ball up if he has the three drop, but otherwise, there's nothing he can do against us. Okay, he conceded. Yeah, he knows he can't win. So, he, yeah, that was his play. Yeah, I play, I just played around it the whole time, man. Good game. All right, dope, cool. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this gameplay video. I know it's quick, simple, and we're playing against just a, a really uh, interesting deck. Uh, 
not necessarily something that is meta defining, but it is kind of cool. Uh, but otherwise, this is a great example of how the deck plays and the answers that the deck draws. I think the biggest thing is just seeing what cards we were drawing across the course of the game and just how we were managing our resources and how we're managing our life. But otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed this vid. Okay, bye!